Hey everybody, Nick with Frost CNC, and today we're going to import a product into Mosaic and uh, ultimately implement it, uh, make sure it works. So I've downloaded uh, one of the products from Frost CNC, this Torsion Box Workbench, and you can see it comes in a zip folder. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my downloads folder. I'm going to open that up, and you can see our Mosaic file in there. And we're going to go ahead and extract uh, that item from the zip folder. So we're going to go with extract all. You can see this screen pops up here, and I want to go ahead and press extract. And ultimately, we end up in our downloads folder with an extracted uh, mosaic file. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to copy, ultimately leave a copy here in the downloads folder. And now I need to go to where all of my mosaic data is stored and I've got it stored on this PC, on the C drive, mosaic. And what we need to find is the product library where I'm going to import uh, that product. So I'll go to product libraries and we're going to put it in this frost CNC folder and ultimately open up products. And we're gonna go ahead and paste that in. And there it is, Torsion Box Workbench. So from here, we're gonna hop over to Mosaic uh, and take it the rest of the way. All right, so now to ultimately import that product uh, into this Frost CNC library, you can still see it's not here, even though I put it in this folder, is we're gonna go up to libraries and products and I'm going to go ahead and right click wherever I want to import that product. And we'll put it at, uh, we're going to go to add product to root. And what that means is it's simply going to add it here at the bottom of this list. And so once I do that, we're going to hit this import button and it's going to open up that exact product libraries, Frost CNC products folder that we just copied our torsion box workbench into. And there it is. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that and press open and press OK. And there it is. Torsion box workbench, uh, excuse me, torsion box workbench added to the list. So let's go check it out. I'm going to press OK here. And there it is in our list. I'm going to drag it out into the room. And now I'm going to go ahead and press edit. and view product and there it is now this is important when importing products from frost cnc is it may not immediately look like you expect it to uh, one thing to make sure of is when assessing a model is to turn on high detail and this is not uh, always on you have to turn it on and what that will do is it'll show some of the cutouts here that are closed tool paths on these parts. Um, and we're gonna choose to keep the holes on top to remain low detail. Whenever you get a large number of holes like we have in this product, is it's best to keep those on low detail. Otherwise, the time it takes to actually render uh, takes a very long time. And so we're gonna go ahead and press uh, yes to keep these holes on low detail. But there you go, you can see the cutouts and you can see the workbench looks like we now expected it to. So again, if you're wondering why your product doesn't look right, uh, go ahead and check high detail to make sure that all of the operations are showing. Uh, the next piece that I want to address here, if we close that, is the sizing. And so when you get this model, the height stretching and the depth stretching are turned off so that when you drag it into a room, it will start at 10 inches tall and at 48 inches deep and it won't snap to the wall cabinet height and depth that you've got set for the room. To change it away, simply go ahead and click height change OK, depth stretch or depth change OK, and now you're free to change your model however you'd like to. Uh, but again, I just unchecked these simply so that it, it snapped into the room uh, at a somewhat correct or more normal uh, height and depth. The last thing we're going to get into here is how do I know what material all of these parts are going to get made out of? What are they called? How do I manipulate that? And so that's going to be the last piece of this video. So if I go into the parts list, you can see 
I've got all these different parts, interior parts, left end, right end, back, front, bottom, top, and it says all three quarter plywood. But the question is, is why three quarter plywood? Why, why is that what it's choosing? And how do I change that? So the first thing we're gonna do is to look at each one of these parts quick. And each part, even though these are custom made parts, if I go to edit, you can see they've all been assigned a type. So Mosaic will assign a part type, a given material based on your material template, which we'll get to in a second. And so the top of the workbench is called a top. If I press okay here, and I go to the bottom and I press edit, you'll see that the bottom is called part type bottom. And what you would see with every other uh, part is they're all called U end or unfinished end. And so if I want to manipulate what material that is, I'm going to make a material template uh, that calls out those three part types we just talked about, top, bottom, and U end. So I'm going to go do that now. So I'll press OK here. And I'm going to go to Libraries, and I'm going to go to Material Templates. And under Cabinet Parts, I'm going to go ahead and make a new material template. And we're going to call this TB workbench. Press OK. Now, like I said, the only materials that are really being used in this particular model are the top, the bottom, and this part type called U end. And so with my top, we'll say I want that to be out of three quarter plywood. That's fine. My U end, we'll say we want that to be out of three quarter plywood. So that's OK. But let's say I want my bottom to be. Let's say I had a half inch material. Let's say I got a sheet of half inch and I'd like my bottom to be different. So what I would do is I would go to bottom up here to select material and anything from my materials list is now available here and I'm gonna go with half inch plywood. So once I implement this template in the model, you should see our top being made out of three quarter, our bottom being made out of half and all of the other parts of this workbench being made out of three quarter plywood. I'm gonna go ahead and press okay here. Now, there are two ways to actually make sure this material template gets implemented. One of the ways would be to go back to settings and libraries, and ultimately for this room, uh, or sorry, excuse me, materials, ultimately for this room, I can change that right here to cabinet material template, and we can go to the TB workbench that I just made right there. That would work just fine. And we could see if I press view, you can see three quarter, half inch bottom, three quarter top, just like I set up. However, if you wanted this to be in a room uh, where there was uh, another type of cabinet or you're making something else and you didn't want this material template there, let's say I'll go back to three quarter melamine cabinet as my template, we can actually change it right at the product. So I'm gonna go back to the products tab. I'm gonna go back to my elevation view. Here's my workbench. And I'm gonna to go to edit, and I'm gonna to go to this info tab. At the info tab here, we can actually override the material template for the casework. And we can go ahead and select TB workbench that we had just made right here at the product instead of doing it uh, in the room. And if we do that, we can go to parts and you can see that everything is what I wanted it to be. You can see my bottom change to the half inch plywood that I specified. And if we go actually look at the model, and zoom in a little bit, you can see that my bottom is in fact a half inch, top three quarter, and everything works with the model. Everything looks great. So the model is smart enough to adapt to those thickness changes uh, with the different materials. Now, if you wanna keep that particular material template for this item all the time, I would go ahead and press save to library and update the current library product and press OK here. And that will now always pull this TB workbench method anytime you drag this item into the room and, and use it. So that's the end of the video and we'll see you on the next one.